Chameleon babies are the cutest thing in the world, and raising them up is an experience of a lifetime. But like most things, you need to be prepared. And so I'm gonna take you with me as I prepare for a clutch of chameleon eggs to hatch. There's two things that you need to be prepared with, and the first is food, and the second is housing. In this video, I'm gonna go over what to feed your hatchling chameleons, and then you're gonna go along with me as I prepare and I'll show you how to do it. There are two types of fruit flies that we work with. The first is the smaller one, Drosophila melanogaster, and the larger one, Drosophila hydei. Now, you don't have to remember all of that. You can call them melanogaster or hydei, or when you're ordering them, just the smaller one and the larger one, and they'll know what you're talking about. The uh, melanogaster is good for the smaller species that have the smaller babies, like carpet chameleons or jeweled chameleons. Uh, the uh, species that you're used to, like veiled chameleons, uh, panther chameleons, and Jackson's chameleons are big enough that their babies can take the hydei. But whenever in doubt, go for the smaller one, the melanic melanogaster, and uh, that will be fine for any of the babies. Any of the babies will eat the smaller one. Now, just as an interesting note, hydei is or are available in two different versions, uh, the black and the golden. Uh, I don't know the difference between them as far as chameleon nutrition, but I enjoy variety, so I do both the black and the golden. And today, you're going to come with me as I do cultures for my golden hydei. So here we have an example of a newly made uh, culture. We have the media at the bottom. We have the excelsior in the middle so all the fruit flies can run around. And you can see the seed group of fruit flies. These are Drosophila hydei, the golden version, and they're just hanging out. They are going to produce eggs, and when those eggs hatch, we go over here, you're going to see a lot of these larvae crawling around. Those are the uh, worm-like things that you see crawling on the side there, and they are going to eat this media all up. Let's see, I think you can see yeah, you can even see uh, them crawling around inside the media. So they're gonna uh, gobble that all up as much as possible and uh, get nice and healthy. And then we come over here, they are going to pupate. And if you see all those hard casings, it, it almost looks like dead worms, but they're not dead. They are just uh, transforming into flies inside of there. You see some of the larva crawling around there. Well, they are going to uh, get that hard casing around them, and then they're going to turn into flies. And each one of those is one fly. Uh, when those all hatch or emerge, then uh, this, uh, this will be full of flies that you can feed off. So this is really all we need to make a bunch of fruit fly cultures. First of all, I'm gonna use a commercially available media. This one's the Rapashi media that uh, I've been very happy with. I'm gonna use 32 inch deli cups here. Now, the important thing is that uh, these lids here are specifically designed for this purpose, and that's a, a cloth, a very thin cloth on the bottom there. So you get the ventilation, but the fruit flies can't get out. And then this strange stuff is Excelsior, and that's going to be uh, put inside there so the fruit flies can have something to walk around on. I, I believe this is made out of wood, and uh, it doesn't mold, so uh, that's why we use this instead of something like uh, egg crate or things like that. As per directions, we've got two-thirds cup of water and we're going to turn it into boiling water. A few moments later. All right, yeah, we got some steam coming up off of there, nice and boiled. Put it down here and then we're going to put in three tablespoons of this magic fruit fly media mix and we stir it up. Once it's stirred, I'm going to put about an inch in each one of these cups. Now just remember, let it cool before you start putting in fruit flies. Now when you want to make all these cups, obviously you make more media, but uh, for this demonstration, I'm just going to make one special cup. So now I'm gonna take my Excelsior. Oh, that's too much. I'm gonna pack some Excelsior in here. There we 
go. That's about right. And yes, I make a mess when I make fruit fly cultures. Now we can talk a little bit about fruit fly cultures while that media is cooling down. Uh, I generally make about four to eight cups every weekend when I'm doing fruit flies. Uh, it takes anywhere from two to three weeks for the fruit flies to develop and actually be a cup that's producing. And that's a word that's good to know, the word producing. So. Uh, when uh, companies make these fruit fly cups, they, they make them just like I did there. And then it's about, they sell them over the next three weeks while they're uh, going through all their cycles. So when you're ordering fruit flies, you may want to ask if it's important to you, are they producing? So what you're doing is asking if they have fruit fly cups that are on the, uh, the end of their development. And if you need fruit flies immediately, you definitely want cups that are quotes producing. Uh, and so uh, you don't have to wait two to three weeks before you can actually use the cups. If you're just getting them to start your colonies because you're being good and you're preparing ahead of time, then it really doesn't matter. Just get them in and uh, that'll be your seed, uh, your seed adults for when you make your cultures. But I make my cultures once every week and that makes sure that I have lots of fruit flies always producing and, and if you do what I do you'll notice very soon that you have more fruit flies that you can use and and that's okay because the last thing you want to do is run out of food having extra fruit flies that's okay and truth be told uh, to take care of the excess fruit flies I got myself a dart frog and you have one or 10. It's a perfect little way to get rid of the excess fruit flies. All right, everything is cooled down. So I've checked, it's cool to the touch. And so it is time to add the fruit flies. Now, make sure your lid is nearby and available. There we go, that is enough. And Ready to go. Now I'm gonna write on date on it so I remember when this was made. And then it goes into this Sterilite container. To help with the humidity, I'm gonna keep it in the mid 70s, around 75 degrees and around 65% humidity. And I should be getting some pretty good uh, production. Now, the critical thing for this is that you plan ahead of time and you start ahead of time. Like I said, it takes two to three weeks for these to start producing, and then you want to start producing more cups after that, and you don't let that cycle break. And so I start a month before my eggs are gonna hatch. Now, we can't know when the eggs are really gonna hatch or when the Jackson's chameleon female is really gonna give us the babies because it can change. So. I end up making more cups and I just keep making more cups. And that's just part of what we're doing here. You've got to keep the cycle going and you can't break it. And so if it takes two months, well then I'm making two months worth of fruit flies. Uh, and yes, I become a fruit fly farmer, but <laughs> that's all part of this to make sure that my babies always have something to eat once they hatch because uh, they'll be okay for about 24 hours because they've had nutrients from the egg uh, or from the uh, the mother and but after that 24 hours they're going to want something to eat and i don't want to be without food yes having that dart frog is kind of fun and he helps uh, with that overflow but the fact is uh you're going to have more food than your babies can eat especially if you've just bought an egg because now people buy eggs and if you had just have one uh, there's no way to make just a cut, uh, just a few fruit flies. You're going to be doing a whole lot of fruit flies, and so you're going to have extra fruit flies. That's okay. Let those fruit flies live their life in a in a wonderful cup without predators and uh, eating the wonderful media. They'll live their life. They'll be happy, and uh, you just make more generations uh, for when your chameleon finally hatches. Now let's talk about wild fruit flies. If you're lucky enough to live in an area that has fruit flies that are wild, naturally occurring, and it's a time of year that you can get them, you can always put out some fruit and you can catch your own uh, wild fruit flies. 
I do this often by putting a piece of fruit like this banana here inside of a screen chameleon cage. And if it has access to the outside, or even if it doesn't, wild fruit flies will show up and they will swarm and then the chameleon can just sit down and pick them off at its leisure. I just wanted to show you a couple of things that I've done with my outdoor cages to attract the natural fruit flies. So this one right here, so this is where I took a plate and I put a bunch of fruit on, on that plate and over that I put a screen and so the chameleon wouldn't fall in. I, I mean, I don't think they would, but just in case they did, uh, they'd be able to get out no problem and then a bunch of sticks over it made it an easy shooting gallery. Uh, this one over here, I just took an orange and I took the top off the orange and I mashed up the middle a little bit, uh, put some sticks in there and the, the, the fruit flies just came to that and it was a perfect little uh, feeding station for uh, a baby chameleon. So uh, these are a couple of, <laughs> so these are a couple of fun things that I've done uh, with fruit to attract the natural fruit flies and they work great. So if you have naturally occurring fruit flies, take advantage of it. It's free food and the chameleons love it. Now you may ask, how do I keep fruit flies inside of my cage? Well, that's actually pretty simple. This is my fruit cup that I put some bananas in. And as you can see, the fruit flies go to the banana. The one thing fruit flies love in life is fruit. And if they've got fruit inside the cage, they have no reason to go outside of the cage. And once again, the chameleon just loves this because they sit down and they just pick off the fruit flies. The next feeder item that's been very useful to me are bean beetles. The uh, scientific name is Callosubrucus maculatus. Yeah, bean beetles. So these little guys, they eat uh, beans or peas and uh, that's their entire life cycle. Very easy to culture. And like I said, a nice crunchy snack for your chameleon. So bean beetles can be cultured in the same 32 ounce deli cup that the, we used for the fruit flies. And so just make your bean beetles while you're making your fruit flies and it all works out perfectly. Bean beetle cultures are beyond easy to make. You get your 32 ounce a deli cup and of course the, uh, the, the special lid. Use black eyed peas. Fill it a couple inches high there. You can see how high I fill it. And then Take the, uh, the living culture here. Good enough. We need something to uh, extract them. And so if you put something like a, a toilet paper roll in there, then they will climb on the toilet paper roll. And when you want to take them out, you can always take out the toilet paper roll and you can see they're already climbing on it. It makes it really easy. So take this, seal it because those little boogers will get out. And then you store it in a place that's say around 80 degrees, uh, 88 to 85, and you're gonna have some uh, bean beetles coming out in about four weeks. Now, the third feeder that I work with for hatchling chameleons is pinhead crickets. Uh, the wonderful thing about crickets is that you can find them in just about any size from pinhead all the way up to adult, and they're generally available for immediate delivery. And so if you're in a rush or in a panic, you can always get a hold of crickets within 24, 48 hours. The disadvantage is that they're very expensive, especially when you consider shipping. You do have the option to breed crickets, and it's not necessarily that hard to breed crickets. It's just a lot of work. I've done it before. Um, I'll, I'll just say I enjoyed the experience, but uh, from now on, I'm going to be uh, buying my crickets because it was a lot of work. And generally, you just need your pinhead crickets for a couple of weeks before the chameleons, which are going to grow very quickly, grow out of pinhead and they start uh, graduating to larger sized uh, food items. Now, those larger sized food items often will be crickets. And with me, I get mine on crickets as soon as possible. The only reason why I don't just start on pinheads and keep them on crickets the entire time is because number one, I do like to give variety. And number two, it is expensive. 
I can make fruit flies myself. I can make bean beetles myself. And so I like to use those two to uh, start off the hatchlings. And then when they get big enough for say one week or two week crickets, get right onto crickets and uh, pack on that weight. Now, the big thing to keep in mind when you have your crickets in there is that you have to feed them. When they come in, they may or may not be uh, nutritious. And so when they come in, give them at least 24 hours of eating fruits, vegetables, and grains that you give them so they can be as nutritious as possible when your chameleon eats them. Of course, as always, if you at all have the option, go ahead and get all three and give your baby chameleons a variety. That's the best way to, uh, to grow them up strong. Now, at this point, you might be asking, where do I get all this material so I can make my own cultures? And you can find these things individually. You can even make your own uh, fruit fly media. But at this point, I would suggest you just find a kit. Uh, places like Josh's Frogs have an entire kit for bean beetles, uh, for Drosophila hydii, for Melanogaster, where they'll give you the flies, the beetles, and everything you need to make your own cultures. And so that's the easiest way to, uh, to get started. So let's talk scheduling. Say you are waiting for your eggs to hatch. You uh, have a clutch of eggs, you have a pregnant Jackson's chameleon. Uh, what I do, is I start a month before I think that they're due. I will bring in uh, fruit flies and bean beetles from one of the many places that supply those. And then I will start my own cultures. And then I will refresh them every weekend. And so that, that way, by time the, uh, the babies come, I'm in full production. Now, how many you do depends upon how many you, uh, babies you expect to feed. And that is, how many eggs do you have? Uh, if you have just one egg, then uh, keep your colony going with just one cup every time. I mean, that works. If you've got a, a clutch of uh, 20 or 30, well, I start to do about four cups or six cups every weekend because I don't want to run out of food. And you want to make sure you have some extra just in case one of the cups, uh, for whatever reason, doesn't work out. And so that's not going to stop your production. And so you just keep making your cultures until the babies hatch and then throughout the time that the babies are of a size to eat the fruit flies and the bean beetles. You want to push them to bigger and bigger food as they are ready because that's the way that they're going to put on the weight. And so you do want to get them to crickets as soon as possible. So what I do is a month before I start my fruit fly and a bean beetle cultures. And then when the babies actually hatch, I will order some crickets and uh, maybe I will order crickets every week or two weeks just to have that as part of their diet. All right, now we have the situation where you are surprised by babies. And how does that happen? Well, it's easy. <laughs> the, uh, the clutch of eggs hatches a month before you expect it to. Or the uh, female Jackson's chameleon that you didn't know was gravid suddenly gives you babies and you're wondering, what do I do? How do I feed all these things? So uh, this is what you're going to do. First of all, you find a place that'll give you uh, pinhead crickets and you order a thousand pinhead crickets. You're gonna get them in, that's gonna be a, a, a for sure thing. Two, you're gonna see if there are natural fruit flies around. So leave out a piece of fruit and see if you have flies that come and gather. If there are, then you are set because uh, you're just getting a, a bunch of bananas and you have uh, free food that will come and they will swarm and the chameleons will eat those fruit flies. Now, sooner or later, you're gonna wanna uh, have them graduate to meatier things, but that's gonna get you over your panic side. So I see if there's natural fruit flies around, I order crickets, and with those crickets, I will also order some fruit fly cultures and bean beetle cultures, and I will start those because I know that I can get those going between two and four weeks, and so I, I will still be able to make use of those. So even if you are surprised by babies, you don't have to worry about it. There are food options available. All right, folks, that's our week on feeding hatchling chameleons. Thank you very much for joining me here, and I will see you next time.